So guys, welcome back to a brand new series that I'm creating on this channel. So this series will be a pretty short one. We will split split the episodes. Uh, we will split the series into let's say five different episodes or something. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, the main goal with the series is to create this game that you see in the in the on the screen right now. So it's a super simple game. Uh, all you have to do is sail around the sea and uh, gather these uh, spheres that pop up from the from the sea from time to time. So. Um, we will learn about some uh, shader stuff, we will learn about some third-person camera stuff, we will learn about animation, we will learn about a little bit, a little bit about Blender as well. Uh, but uh, I'm, a pre <laughs> I'm a complete noob at Blender, but, but I managed to create some simple uh, low-poly low poly, um, islands and, and so on. So yeah, that is it. Um, let's get started. Okay guys, so... I thought we would start off by create the player scene and first off we need to grab ourselves a pretty looking mesh to represent our ship and for that I found this awesome dude let's see if I can find him again uh, oh do I need to yeah okay so here it is um, I found this reddit post where he gives away six different um, models, low poly ships. So let's press download and head into OBJ files. You can choose FBX if you want as well, but I'll go with the OBJ files. And uh, choose whatever ship you want. I'll just go with the sail ship, but I've already downloaded it, so I won't do it again. And once that is downloaded, just drag it into the project folder. And there it is. So. I'll create a new folder as well called assets where we'll store all, all our assets. Cool, so now to the scene. Press other node, search for kinematic body and copy this uh, and select this one. Uh, rename it to player and give it a collision shape as well and a mesh instance and just drag this obj file to the mesh and there it is. And save it and create a new folder called source and bada bing bada boom. Okay, so now to the third person camera stuff and all that fun stuff. So I actually found a, uh, a, a, um, a script online and let's see if I can find this guy again. Um, okay, so yeah, so here he is. And um, so this guy, JNM, JNM, I don't even know how to pronounce that, sorry. But download this nature scene and then open it up. And under player.gd, just copy all this stuff. Control C and attach it to a new script. And there it is. So we will modify this a little bit. So we will remove gravity. Uh, and we will also, let's see, we can do something like this. We will, okay, so this camera gets, I don't even like that. So let's just do it something like this. On ready var camera equals uh, oh we haven't we haven't even created our camera so let's do that so let's create a new spatial will be which will be our target and let's create a camera so camera equals camera and um, Okay, so this takes the camera's transform. Let's 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 see. So um, we'll do we'll do something like this. So camera transform var camera transform equals camera dot global transform, and let's change this to be camera transform 
and we can now remove this. I think this works at least. Okay, so uh, so here's our third person camera script. We need to create uh, a script for the camera as well. So let's do that. So let's just attach a script to the camera. And this will be a pretty short script. We will start off by remove the comments and override the ready function. And we'll set this to uh, set as top level to true. And this just this just uh, tells the camera to ignore the parent's transform. Otherwise, otherwise we will mess up the camera's rotation and all that stuff. So override the process function. And now we will get a target. And the target, which will be this node, uh, equals get parent dot get global transform dot origin. And this just gets the position, the global position of the target's translation. And then we will get our current position equals get global transform dot origin. This will be the, the camera's global position. And I might zoom in a bit, sorry. I hope you have seen, I hope you uh, can read all this stuff. Okay, so. And now we'll give a offset from, uh, from the current position to target. And we will normalize this, so offset equals offset dot normalized, normalized times a distance between the target and the camera. So this is the distance of how far away the, the, the camera will be. So we can create a const uh, distance equals, let's say eight for now. And we will also provide for the height, let's say 4.0. So, uh, so this is a distance from how far away the camera will be from the player or rather from the target, which will be the player. And we will also set offset.y to the height. Then once this is done, we will set the current position to be uh, the target plus the offset. And then we will look at we will look at the player from this position. So this is just from the current position. Position. <laughs> Current position. And we will look at the target and we will provide it with a vector 3.up. Cool, I think that is it. We'll save it. And I think that is it. Yeah, and once again, and one important thing is just just move this camera out. You can't have it at the same place at the target because otherwise you'll get some funny results with this. You will get some errors with this position. So just move the camera out, not the target, the camera's translation. Okay, and save it, and we can try to run the scene, and we don't get any errors. And to make sure that we are moving, we'll create a new sandbox scene. So let's just create a new spatial, let's hit sandbox, and we will save this as well. Then create a mesh instance, and we will give this mesh instance a plane mesh. And let's give it a size of 10, and provide it with a spatial material, and under albedo, just, just attach this icon. So we can see the player move. So when we attach and we instantiate our player now, press this little instance button. And if we run this thing, F5 uh, is to run the game. We need to select a scene to start off with. We we'll select the sandbox and open. So if we move, oh, okay, yeah, we can't move because we haven't, <laughs> we need to make the inputs. So let's write move forward move backward, move left, and move right. You can choose whatever keys you want. I'll go with the arrow keys. So up, down, left, and right. So now, if we run the game with F5, 
we will move the player and that is awesome look at this cool 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 so let's uh, rotate the player as well because now we're, we're just moving it around we aren't rotating him so let's uh, head into the player script and under velocity we will see if we are moving and to see if we're moving we will uh, call if direction dir dot length is greater than zero uh, which means we are moving uh, we will rotate him so to do that we will get an angle 8102 this is some dope ass math that I barely understand myself so horizontal velocity dot x horizontal velocity dot y um, and we will get the character rotation so var uh, current rotation equals uh, get rotation and we will set the y rotation to angle so current rotation dot y equals angle and we can then just set our rotation to current rotation we can actually just we don't even need to have an angle at the moment let's just do something like that and run the game and it doesn't run length oh sorry this is a function call so we need to don't forget the brackets and uh, he's he's rotating but he's rotating in the wrong way so let's see what we are doing wrong oh of course yeah I wrote a, <laughs> a y value there so we of course need the z value and there it is look at that now we got a ship that is rotating around uh, in, the, in the correct direction and everything is fine and dandy so in the next episode we will uh, give this ship some materials and we will also create some cool water maybe or something i don't even know we'll see until then peace out